Everybody wants to know. That's right, Governor. Everybody wants to know. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Devon Holt, and I am the Chief External Affairs Officer at Goodwill Industries of Kentucky. And <laughs> thank you. And uh, I will tell you guys one of my biggest fears is and has always been hosting a party and no one show up been a big fear of mine. And I'm thankful today that you guys did not let me down. Uh, we planned 100 seats. Uh, Riggs Lewis and I with Norton Healthcare predicted uh, that we'd ex exceed that, but I had no idea this would uh, turn into this type of showing. But let me tell you, I think uh, what we're announcing today warrants this attention and this presence, uh, because today we are committed to announce a $100 million commitment to 28th Street and Broadway in West Lake. <laughs> and uh, I don't have to tell you guys that that is a big deal. We all get it. We all know it. We all understand. Uh, that West Louisville uh, has been an underserved community. And I know that uh, not just because of this work that I'm doing with Goodwill, not just because of the work that we're doing in partnership with Norton Healthcare, but because I'm a resident of West Louisville, a longtime resident of West Louisville, where I have intentionally planted my personal flag uh, and decided uh, that's where I wanted to call home so that I could be part of the solution. I will tell you, years ago, my great-grandfather told me something that, that has never left me. He said, a friend is someone who walks into your life when other people are walking out. And as a longtime resident of West Louisville, I've watched a lot of people leave West Louisville. I've watched a lot of businesses leave West Louisville. I've watched a lot of organizations and investments move to other parts of the city. Uh, but today, I'm happy to announce that West Louisville has two new friends who are walking in uh, when others have walked out. Uh, Goodwill Industries of Kentucky and Norton Healthcare. And we're not alone. We have some other partners who are also uh, going to be co-located with us in this space. And we're going to share all of those details with you. We're going to talk about uh, the historic investment that Norton Healthcare is making. Uh, we're going to tell you about work that we've done in the community that helped lead us to this point today. Uh, but before we do all of that, I want to invite Amy Luttrell, the CEO of Goodwill Industries of Kentucky, uh, to share with you uh, how we got to this point. Because it was a vision that our board and our CEO and leaders inside of Goodwill had uh, that ultimately led us to this point today. And so I'm going to ask you to welcome uh, Amy Luttrell uh, to share more details about why we're here this morning. Amy? Hello, everybody. And I just want to add my thanks to all of you for being here to help us celebrate today. I haven't gotten to speak with all of you, but I hope I do before we all leave today. So thank you so much. Goodwill Industries of Kentucky is so excited to be here today to announce our Opportunity Campus in the Parkland community at the corner of 28th and Broadway. We've already been working on this for several years, but now it's coming to fruition. We expect to break ground this summer and to move in mid-2023, so it's coming. <laughs> So first, I'll tell you what the Opportunity Campus is and why Goodwill is doing it. You can think of it as a community of support to surround a person who wants a different life but who hasn't been able to make it happen because they haven't been able to access all the resources that they needed to break through the barriers that they face. And that applies to a lot of Kentuckians. Over the past few years, Goodwill has committed all of our efforts to helping people escape 
poverty, and this is throughout Kentucky. We know everything that poverty means in people's lives, uh, how corrosive it is, and that's our goal, is not to help people just get a job, but to get all the way out of poverty. So to that end, we have broadened our own services, but we've also partnered with other organizations that have services that we don't have. And you will see some of those organizations here with us today who are actually going to be part of the Opportunity Campus. So what's been taking shape, and it will continue to grow, is this community of support, a holistic approach that can make the difference in what kind of life a person is able to have. Our goal is to fill gaps and level the playing field so that every Kentuckian in poverty has an equal opportunity to escape it. That's our goal. We're calling it an opportunity campus because opportunity means conditions that are conducive for success. So we furnish information, we furnish resources of all kinds, and we furnish a lot of personal support. What we call a hand up for people, each person to be able to decide what kind of life they want to lead and to work toward achieving that goal. And we see so many people do exactly that. We know the importance of location and ease of access. So we've evaluated all of our locations statewide. And in Louisville, that process led us to identify both the south part of Louisville, down around Preston Highway, and west Louisville as areas where we were absent and where we needed to be. So this Opportunity Campus at 28th and Broadway will help to remedy that gap. As part of our planning, we talked with a lot of people in West Louisville, and we will continue to do that. We talked with leaders, residents, business people, and we asked them, what do you think is needed in West Louisville? What would you like to see in West Louisville? And what can Goodwill do to try to be a good neighbor in West Louisville? Because we really do want to be a good neighbor. And so Devon, in just a few minutes, will tell you more about that process and the feedback that we got as a result. And we're going to make that feedback available to the whole community because there will be a lot of pieces that we can't do. They're not a fit for our mission, but that we hope and believe others will do. This campus will also serve as the new headquarters for Goodwill Industries of Kentucky. Goodwill is a statewide organization, and so this Opportunity Campus will be our statewide headquarters. This was a decision of our board of directors, and it will bring additional higher level jobs and additional investment to West Louisville. I want to recognize Jason Gronick, who's, raise your hand please, Jason, who's the chair of our board. We also have here uh, with us today Charles Kane, who's immediate past chair of our board. And I know we have um, Hugh Hayden, who's a member of our board, and I don't know if we have any other board members. Or, well, I know we have Dan Hall. Dan Hall was chair of our board before Charlie Kane. And Dan was one of the voices who nudged us to offer more in West Louisville because Dan loves West Louisville so much. A lot of you know Dan, and you already know that. Dan started talking with me pretty much as soon as I moved back to Kentucky in 2014 and saying, you know, what's Goodwill going to do in West Louisville? Well, my immediate answer was, I don't know. <laughs> but here we are, and Dan, I hope you're pleased today. In planning this campus, it has been our hope and our belief that our investment and our presence would be a catalyst for other investments. We saw that happen with the Urban Leagues, the Louisville Urban Leagues Athletic Facility, and we believed that it would happen also with our project. The first evidence of this is the Norton Healthcare investment that you're going to hear about in a few minutes. Norton approached us a few months ago with an idea that they had that would add to their physical presence in West Louisville and would also bring some health care services that people in West Louisville had told us they want. So Norton Healthcare President and CEO Russell Cox will tell you more about Norton's investment shortly, but 
I want to tell you that as part of that investment, Norton Healthcare will be the lead sponsor for the Opportunity Campus with naming rights. Let's thank them. Of course, we are thrilled and so grateful to have that kind of partnership with Norton Healthcare and to be able to facilitate them having such a significant presence in West Louisville. So how will Goodwill pay for this campus? We do have several sources of funds that we're going to bring to bear, but we also will be asking the community to support the project financially. And of course, the Norton Healthcare sponsorship is our lead gift. Over the past few years, a lot of you have already seen Goodwill add significantly to the services that we provide in Kentucky. So now, I ask you to stay tuned for this next phase because together, Goodwill, Norton Healthcare, and our partners, we're going to leverage this Opportunity Campus to offer even more support than we ever have before to Louisvillians who want a better life. Thank you very much. So Goodwill and Norton obviously are uh, big names that are coming to West Louisville, uh, but there's more to this picture. And uh, when we decided we wanted to build an opportunity campus, uh, we recognize that uh, while there are a number of things that Goodwill does very well, uh, there were other things and voids that needed to be filled that we just weren't positioned and poised to do. And because of that, uh, we started uh, building relationships with other organizations, and uh, I'm excited now about the, the family, I call them, uh, that we are bringing with us uh, to West Louisville. And, uh, the person who's helped manage that process and uh, pull this family together uh, is our COO, Rena Sharp, and she's going to tell you a little bit more about how all of this came together. Thank you, Devon. What an exciting day. So this week marks five years since I joined Goodwill, and what an incredible five years it has been. I have met with hundreds of partners here in Louisville and across the state to talk about our mission and the supports that we offer and to learn more about the services that they provide and talk about ways that we could partner together. At Goodwill, as Devon said, we realize that working together with other agencies is paramount in helping our clients to navigate through the barriers that hold them back. I recall telling Amy several years ago that we should all just move in together in one big house um, to make it easier for our clients to access the resources they so desperately need. Not knowing then that it would be possible, but we have formed some amazing partnerships and we are here today to announce that we are moving in together, not in a house, but the outcomes will be the same. Imagine, whether it's the free drop-in childcare at the YMCA for the young mother who otherwise would not be able to attend trainings or access services, or the career pathway in barbering at the Kentucky College of Barbering, or just access to an affordable haircut and shave. Career training and employer connections through Kentucky Anna Works and Equus. Legal services with legal aid. Yes, they will have full-time attorneys on site Monday through Friday, not only for our clients, but for the community of West Louisville. Affordable dental care and behavioral health with our partners, Shawnee Christian Healthcare. Bigs and littles coming together at Big Brothers, Big Sisters, as well as easy access for young adults to their new mentoring program. VOAs, restorative justice, veterans, community health workers, and housing program. Full service banking, including second chance banking, for those needing a fresh start and financial literacy from our partners with Park Community Credit Union. And Creative Spirits, 
our existing partner, will be there with us to provide their amazing behavioral health and counseling services. Advanced culinary certifications with Catholic Charities and Common Table. Kim Moore with Joshua Community Connectors, recruiting and retention of young adults to all of Goodwill's and our partners' programming. And Goodwill will be offering free barrier removal services, housing, transportation, expungement services, a chapel with spiritual support, personal and pro professional development, including soft skills, digital literacy, computer basics, forklift certifications, welding training, mock interviewing, a computer lab open to the community, and more. What else? We will have a training center that will be available and free to the community and other nonprofits for events, as well as a business center available to the community with computers, copier, fax, and Wi-Fi. And don't forget, everyone loves to eat. We may or may not heard that that would be something that might be welcome in the community, and we will have a full-service cafeteria offering healthy options and hot meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> So as we stand here together today, we are celebrating a partner collaboration that will rival any other national example and is certainly the first of its kind in Kentucky. Whether it's the partners that are co-locating with us or others with offices elsewhere that will have flexible space that we will provide to them in the center, we are all coming together in unity, putting the needs of the community first and making it possible for individuals to access life-changing resources in one place. We've all heard the saying that it's amazing what we can accomplish when no one cares who gets the credit. That makes sense to me. Thank you very much. So I hope you guys get the point that this is big. It's, it's, it's enormous, and there are so many moving pieces and parts uh, to this Opportunity Campus that is going to bring uh, what I hope will be a, a great sense of, of hope to our community. And uh, we got to this point uh, not because uh, Goodwill had a single vision, but because we were very intentional about making sure that we didn't just show up out of the blue one day and say to the community, we're here. What we did do, in fact, was spend half of a year, six months, engaging the community in deep, substantive conversations, surveying them to get a sense of what's needed, what's necessary uh, in West Louisville in order to make significant change. Uh, and I'm proud of the work that we've done in order to uh, get to this point today because uh, what you've heard from Rena and from Amy is in many cases a reflection of what the community has shared with us. Many of you received when you walked in the door a press kit. And in that press kit is a, a document that says the West Louisville Community Engagement Report. And this report is a reflection of what we were able uh, to collect in responses from more than uh, 2,000 residents in West Louisville who were asked questions, as Amy mentioned to you, like, what do you like about West Louisville? What do you find challenging about West Louisville? What are your hopes and desires for West Louisville? What resources do you think are necessary in order for West Louisville to fulfill its greatest potential? And then we asked, what did they believe would be necessary for goodwill to do in order to be a good neighbor when we move into West Louisville. And we captured all of those results. We worked with IQS Research Company to compile and synthesize that data into uh, digestible amounts of information that help us understand where we needed to invest resources. But more importantly, I think it helped us uh, create a vision for how we work to improve West Louisville. You know, so often my friend Sadiqa Reynolds talks about uh, how people from outside of our community uh, come into West Louisville looking to project their desires and ambitions on this community uh, with no interest to hear from the community itself. Well, that was not the road we took. We spent 
a good amount of time hearing from the community. And what we've done is respond to that. Uh, I want to encourage you to spend some time looking at this report, understanding what the community says is important in West Louisville for those who live here, for those who own property here, for those who work here. Uh, their voices are reflected in this report. And they shared a lot of things with us, but I want to share with you four themes that we found uh, that ran common throughout this report. The first thing that we saw uh, through and through this report was that there was a strong sense of fondness and pride for West Louisville uh, among the people who live in or have grown up in this area. The people who live in West Louisville love West Louisville. The people who were raised in West Louisville love West Louisville. And that's because they get to see it on a daily basis and recognize that there's so much more to this community than what we see projected uh, in the news in some cases and in circles of conversation among people who don't get to experience this community up close and personal. The second thing we heard uh, and, and the theme that ran throughout this report was that there's a common belief that outside organizations planning to move into West Louisville will encounter varying levels of trust and acceptance based on their willingness to be transparent, engaging, inclusive, and sincere. In other words, don't just come, show up, and think we will embrace what you have to offer in this community. Uh, they want to recognize that their voices have been heard and that there's a sincere effort to engage and connect with the work that's already happening in West Louisville. Third, West Louisville residents do have a strong desire to see the area thrive, but they are skeptical of outside organizations based on past plans and promises that were not fulfilled. And we know those stories, right? We've heard them time and time again in West Louisville, how this thing had been proposed and that thing has been proposed, but unfortunately, they have not come to fruition. And the community recognized that uh, as uh, an eyesore, as a frustration, as a pain point uh, that any organization coming into this community would have to confront. And lastly, uh, they said despite their skepticism, community members recognize the need for services to help improve the lives of West Louisville residents. Most notably, residents view job services as the service most needed in West Louisville. And so those four themes we recognized when we began putting together plans for this Opportunity Campus. And I believe everything that you hear and see will reflect our desire to address many of the concerns that the community has. But as Amy said, we also recognize that there are gaps that West, in West Louisville that Goodwill is just not positioned and poised to fulfill. Uh, and so our desire and our hope is that this report will be one that other organizations and other businesses might utilize as they consider plans to relocate, expand, or move into West Louisville. Uh, we want to make sure that this work is uh, not work that's done just for the purposes of uh, uh, benefiting goodwill, but we believe that those who are looking to follow behind will also find great advantage by uh, learning more about what the community has to share and wants to offer. And so with that, we were able uh, to not only use this report to help shape our vision for what we were bringing as a nonprofit organization to West Louisville, but we were able to also share that with Norton Healthcare. As Amy said, they uh, came knocking on the door uh, with this great idea of co-locating uh, with Goodwill on the corner of 28th and Broadway. And I will just take a, a, a moment of privilege while I have this microphone and this stage to say that Russ Cox, uh, the president of Norton Healthcare uh, is an exceptional visionary who has a heart for doing good in this community. And one of the things that he put on full display in our interactions with him through this process is that um, it doesn't have to take very long to make big decisions. Uh, that when your heart is in the right place and you have a desire to do good you don't have to wrangle with a lot of bureaucracies. You can get straight to it. And let me tell you, this is a man who wanted to get straight to it. This is... <laughs> In fact, if it was up to Russ Cox, we would have had this press conference two weeks ago. 
but I had to hold him off and tell him we've got a few more ducks we got to get a line. But uh, today we are here, and I'm thankful to have his partnership. Ladies and gentlemen, won't you welcome and appreciate the work that Norton Healthcare has done through their leader, Thank Russ you. Cox. Thank you. Man. You're a great job. Thank you. Please don't judge me for my folder matching my tie. <laughs> totally unintentional. Wow, divine. Thank you so much. You sound like a person who's had to negotiate with Scott Watkins for two or three weeks. <laughs> That's an inside joke. Most of all, Amy, goodwill. Your leadership around this is incredible. It's energized Norton Healthcare in a way that our community needs energy. So, Round of applause, everyone from Goodwill. <laughs> Renee, one minute in and I'm off script, but as I'm sitting on this stage and I'm looking at the portraits that are above us and looking at this event and I see the names and I think they're proud of this. They're proud of this. So much of what you're going to hear me say are things that I've learned from people who are in these pictures. That's important. Place is always important. I want to thank our Board of Trustees led by our Chair, Edie Nixon. Edie, would you stand? Let's give Edie a round of applause. It takes courage to be a Board Chair when you have me as the CEO. Edie's up to the task. We have many of our board members here today, and I'd like to ask them to stand and please recognize their courage as well. Our, our board of trustees, would you please stand? Thank you. There's a whole lot of folks here who make up the Norton Healthcare family by coming to work every day and living out our mission, vision, and values. Wave or stand if you're here. Thank you for all that you're doing. It's a big crowd back there. Now, at the risk of hyperbole, of which sometimes I am guilty, today could be the most transformational day in the history of healthcare in our community. Perhaps more significantly, today provides us with an opportunity to truly begin to change the narrative about investment in West Louisville, permanence of commitment in West Louisville, and sustainability in West Louisville. You can applaud for that. Those are important things. So grateful to Goodwill for letting us be part of this Opportunity Campus. We absolutely believe that people can't truly have opportunity if they don't have access to quality health care. That's how everybody's going to live their best life. That's what this is about. 1845, the year, 1845, 177 years ago is when construction began on the last hospital in Louisville that was built west of 9th Street. That was the Marine Hospital that opened in 1852. Sadly, it closed in 1933. Now, since that time, what's happened? Well, a person's zip code has become one of the biggest factors in determining their health outcome in Louisville, Kentucky. That's something that we all have to look in the mirror every day and decide whether or not that's acceptable. It's not. It is not. That's something we all have to face and address. According to the most recent health equity report for the city of Louisville, residents in West Louisville have some of the highest rates of cancer, the highest incidence of stroke, and the highest incidence of heart disease. That's unacceptable. Look, your genetic code is going to do enough to you and going to have enough of an impact on your health status. Your zip code can no longer come into play with your health status. We've got to address this and we've got to take steps to meaningful change health outcomes. We're going to do that. We're going to change this narrative by living up to the mission that we look at every day. We're going to provide quality care across the entire community, 
In November, we opened our Institute for Health Equity, led by Dr. Kelly McCants. <laughs> Kelly is with us today. Kelly, if you'd stand. <laughs> I want to thank Kelly for the wonderful work that he's doing. But look, that's just one approach. We know what it will take to truly change outcomes and provide access. So, today, we are proud to announce that Norton Healthcare will invest $70 million to build the first hospital west of 9th Street since that Marine Hospital was built 177 years ago. And there's what it's going to look like. Oh wait, there's more. You gotta sit down. There's more. As you know, it's gonna be part of this Goodwill Opportunity Campus at 28th and Broadway. We're gonna focus on people first, and then we're gonna focus on improving those health statistics. Now, this facility is gonna include both adult and pediatric physician offices. There's gonna be a 24-hour emergency department. There'll be access to specialty services like women's health, cardiology, neurology, endocrinology, we're going to have diagnostic services that are going to be there, like x-rays, CT scans, and yes, we will have approximately 20 inpatient beds to start out with that will enable people to have inpatient procedures right in this neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. But the future of this facility is about a vision of what else we can do and continued growth in the future. Today is just the first step. Not only will Norton Healthcare provide easier access to this care, but approximately 100 new jobs will be available at this facility to begin with. This facility is going to be a destination for medical professionals from across the country who are leading experts in their fields. As we work to keep our community healthy, we also have to create careers in healthcare. We've partnered with Simmons College of Kentucky to introduce more students to the medical field as well as coordinate with other HBCUs from across the country. Our goal is to develop a pipeline of providers who are prepared to care for our community that look like our community. Without question, we're going to create a model nationally that others are going to want to replicate. That's important. We're also going to quickly accelerate the goal to make Louisville known as an HBCU town. <laughs> the only thing I can say there is, watch out Nashville, we're coming for you. <laughs> In a recent survey of physicians and community leaders, we heard about the need for increased access points of care in West Louisville. We're listening, and we're acting, and it's going to happen. Increasing access to care is the most important thing we can do. We are committed to meeting people where they are and in a permanent sort of way. I love mobile vans, and there's a place for mobile vans. But mobile vans roll in and roll out. This hospital is permanently in this community. <laughs> So this is an incredible opportunity for Norton Healthcare and an incredible opportunity campus. It gives us opportunities that we've never had. But you know what? This kind of work comes together through incredible collaborations, just like Amy said, the one you're hearing about today. When I took the role of CEO of Norton Healthcare in 2017, it was always clear from those people who stood and from that board chair that my priority needed to be about health equity, access, and partnerships. It's what's guided our work and led us to this point today. Yesterday, I heard Dr. Cosby so eloquently tell this story at the uh, Simmons breakfast about the turtle on the fence post. And yes, I do steal things from other speakers. <laughs> he talks about that turtle on the fence post and the realization that he didn't get there by himself. Somebody helped. Somebody else was involved in it. It stuck yesterday as I drove home. 
from this breakfast that today Norton Healthcare is that turtle. And much like that turtle, we didn't get there on our own. So many great people and partners have helped us. Sadiq Reynolds, the Urban League, thank you for allowing us to partner with you. Sadiq will allow us to partner on the world-class track and field facility known as the Norton Healthcare Sports and Learning Center. And quite honestly, it's bringing people, hang on a second, it's bringing people to 30th and Muhammad Ali that otherwise would never have known where 30th and Muhammad Ali was. People outside our community, but people inside our community as well. But Sadiq, well, more than anything else, Thanks for inspiring me personally to do more, to think bigger, and to think about things like we're announcing today. Moreover, thank you for allowing us to partner with the Urban League on COVID and testing vaccines. Your willingness to trust us created trust for us in this community. That's how it works. So thanks for putting us on that fence post. Steve Tarver and the YMCA of Louisville, thank you for allowing us to partner with you at the facility at 18th and Broadway. Simply put, our clinic there is full. The confluence of healthcare and wellness is a powerful combination. Thank you, Steve Tarver and the YMCA, for helping put us on that fence post. Let's give a round of applause to Steve. How about the Reverend Dr. James Seta Ferguson? Thank you for partnering with us. and allowing us to establish the headquarters for the Norton Healthcare Institute for Health Equity in Moa Village, 12th and Jefferson. This presence is allowing us to redefine health equity exactly where we should be redefining it. So, James Seta, thanks for putting Norton Healthcare on that fence post. Dr. Cosby, thank you for allowing us to partner with Simmons College and be a part of a renaissance that you're so masterfully orchestrating. The youth of our community, the youth of West Louisville now have hopes, now have dreams that can take flight and not only change our community, but change our state, change the world. Thank you for putting us on that fence post. And Amy, thank you for trusting us to be a part of something that is so special and creating an opportunity and a place that so many have ignored for so many years. Looks like our missions are now intertwined and together we're going to be more effective. In this case, one plus one, it's going to equal three. Thank you for putting us on that fence post with you. Folks, these partnerships and this new hospital are going to redefine our organization, but more importantly, they're going to establish a new narrative for our community. In this moment, we've all stood up together and said, we're going to change things. We're going to rewrite the story of this community. And by the way, stay tuned. We have some more partnerships we're going to be talking about in the near future. You know, today is made really special in so many ways, but folks, it always comes back to people for me. People who share your hopes and dreams. Allow me to get personal for a second. 14 years ago, we hired our marketing and communications executive, Dana Allen. Then we hired her from a great West Louisville organization known as Brown Foreman. One of the reasons we hired her was because she knew, we knew she had a heart for the underserved. She had a heart for West Louisville. And she put herself out there on a daily basis to do what was right. Well, Friday, she officially retires from Norton Healthcare. So Dana Allen, I hope you're here. <laughs> so Dana, thanks for your relentless pursuit of access and approachable expertise for all. You know, we told Dana, you can leave, you can retire, as long as you can find someone with the same heart and passion that you have. And she had did so, and she is now passing that torch to Renee Murphy, who is our new Senior Vice President 
Chief Marketing and Communications Officer. So that's why Dana looks really relaxed today, and Renee is really hoping that I'll stop talking soon. So folks, thank you very much for, for enduring me today. This is such a, a, a big moment for people, and that's what Norton Healthcare is about. But you know what? It's not only a significant day for Louisville. This is a significant day for our Commonwealth. So at this time, I'm going to introduce somebody who's been there for us throughout some of the biggest challenges in healthcare over the last two years. And you know what? I was reading the script and thought, the biggest challenges in healthcare? I've had conversations with this governor who's dealing with the most historic floods ever in the history of Kentucky, the most catastrophic tornadoes ever in the history of the state. And by the way, I've come to know when you see him in that Kentucky emergency management blue jacket, it's not good. Good things are not happening if he's got that blue jacket on. As you can expect, though, during the pandemic, I had regular phone conversations with Governor Bashir. Every conversation we had, there was always a discussion about health equity and reaching out to the communities that have been made even more vulnerable by COVID. I assure you, his last phrase to me was always this, what else can I do to help you help others? His commitment to health equity in our state is what's made today possible. So please join me in welcoming, welcoming our governor, Andy Bashir. Thanks for being here. One hundred million dollars. <laughs> what a great day. A hundred million dollars. And I can't think of a better location to make today's announcement, the Kentucky Center for African American Heritage. Many of us were just here last week doing the right thing with the posthumous promotion of Colonel Charles Young to Brigadier General in the U.S. Army. It was a joyful day, righting a historic wrong and recognizing that we did that in Kentucky two years earlier. But it was a day that also reminded us that lack of opportunities to promotions, to jobs, and to careers have been barriers for our fellow citizens, not just in the time of Colonel Charles Young, now General Charles Young, but in the hundred years since his death, and how it is our duty to address these historic inequities in our time. Opportunity requires access. And to be truly successful, I believe that means access not just to job trainings and jobs and promotions, but also access to health care. Today, I think we're living out our duty, living our faith, and living our values. We're here to celebrate an incredible leap forward in building a better West Louisville, a better Louisville, and a better Kentucky. <clears throat> Goodwill Industries and Norton Healthcare are a couple of names that are well known in this community and throughout this state. They are both storied, not-for-profit entities with deep roots here. Goodwill Industries of Kentucky has been headquartered in Louisville since 1923, where it's worked to give folks a needed hand up as they work towards self-sufficiency. Norton Healthcare has been providing high-quality health care to the residents of Louisville, eh, southern Indiana, <laughs> and across the Commonwealth for decades. And let me just say, to them, and to every other leader here, to the Urban League, to our pastors, I can't thank you enough for your leadership in health care during this pandemic. Now, as we sat in the midst of one of the scariest times, I remember July of 2022, black Kentuckians were making up 20% of our state's deaths. And the leaders in this room and so many others made a commitment to provide better access to health care and health insurance to make sure that we were doing everything we could to make every one of our programs equitable. 
And I think those efforts prove that when you are intentional, when you are listening, and when you're working together, what's possible? Because in a year and a half, we've moved those numbers from 20% of COVID deaths to less than 7%. But today, we're here together as these two Team Kentucky players are joining forces to do even more with this new $100 million investment to create an opportunity campus right here. You know, as governor, I've gotten to announce a lot of new investments. It's an exciting time in Kentucky. But when you're on that cusp of prosperity, which I believe that we are, a record-setting year in economic development last year, a record 11.2 billion dollars of new investment, a record 18,000 new jobs at the second highest wage we've ever announced. It comes with the responsibility that that prosperity reach not just every part of Kentucky, but also every neighborhood in each of our cities. To make sure that those that are too often left out in historic moments are not left out. Well, today we're talking about a hundred million dollars of investment and 200 high quality jobs in West Louisville. That's pretty special. We're talking about 20 acres of development of an opportunity campus that's going to include Goodwill putting $30 million into a state-of-the-art job training facility and Norton Healthcare investing $70 million providing direct access to health care for the community. The $30 million main campus will house Goodwill's headquarters as well as offices for their key partners. I know you heard them, but it's exciting to hear them all together. Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Kentuckiana Works, Volunteers of America, the YMCA, the Legal Aid Society, Park Community Credit Union, Shawnee Christian Health Care Center, and the Kentucky College of Barbering. How about that for cooperation? I don't know about you, but I jumped out of my seat for the official announcement. We've known about this for a couple months, but we're pretty good at keeping secrets. That Norton is opening the first comprehensive medical facility in the neighborhood in more than 100 years. So I just think a little bit about symmetry. 100 years since Charles Young's death, and he's getting his due. 100 years since there's been a facility like this. Maybe, just maybe, we're getting this historic moment right. The project's going to have a huge economic impact all by itself. It is expected to bring more than 200 jobs to the neighborhood with an average annual wage of $59,000. And that's talking about permanent jobs. In the meantime, 200 construction jobs on site building a state-of-the-art campus. You know, it's amazing, but I believe it's just the tip of the iceberg. The center expects to serve 50,000 people each year with programs and services that will enhance lives and careers. So the full economic impact from this center is expected to be $18.7 million every single year it's in operation. And talk about a projection we got to make sure occurs. It is expected to place more than 600 job seekers into full-time employment every year it's in operation. This center is coming at such an important time. You now, Kentucky is on a roll. We talk about an economy on fire. We talk about a workforce where we need everybody. Everybody. Because jobs and wages right now are at a better place than they have ever been. So what better time to try to get it right? What a better opportunity to break cycles of poverty. What a better time to make sure that every neighborhood and every city, including this city, is included at what might be our best chance as a state to leap forward. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty tired of being 40th in anything. <laughs> And the great lesson of COVID is we are all connected in fundamental, special, and important ways. You know, if we want to leapfrog not three states, but 30 states, we do it together. We do it across every neighborhood, and we do it by investing in areas that haven't seen enough investment. And ensuring just like 
addressing health care disparities, that we are intentional. And I think that's being, what's being done here today. And I will never know and never be able to feel uh, the crushing weight of racism, of the vestiges of segregation and of slavery. But there are a lot of great leaders here that have been willing to teach. And I hope you've seen somebody willing to listen. And then to work. Now, this is one of my best days I've had as governor. And I don't say that just because I've been governor in COVID. <laughs> you know, we've had days where, where I've gotten to announce the single largest economic development project in Kentucky's history. I've gotten days where we've been able to announce uh, amazing programs throughout the state, biggest investment in Western Kentucky in 25 years. But this today ranks right up with our best days. We got to restore voting rights to over 180,000 Kentuckians. This here today, I think, is a day of incredible opportunity where I hope we are getting it right. And just think about these three or so blocks because we've also located the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet Drivers Licensing Regional Office in this exact same area at the NIA Center. A chance to be um, a, an area where hundreds of people are working bustling economic opportunity. So many people being able to see not just what's going on, but also what's possible in every other block. I want to thank TARC for being set up right there to make sure that everybody can access these surfaces. And I want to thank Goodwill and Norton for not just seeing an opportunity, but a transformational opportunity for thinking really, really big and for truly uh, acting. And I hope that COVID has taught us that access to health care is not just a basic human right, it should be good business as well. That ensuring we have services in every part of this state so that everybody can live their healthiest lives is absolutely necessary. Now, this is our chance. This is our chance as, as Kentuckians to be something bigger and something better than ever before, which makes this announcement just as important, maybe more important, and just about any one I've been able to make. So I want to thank everybody in this room who has supported and believed in this project, has supported and believed in this administration, and has believed a day like today not only is possible, but I'm going to tell you, we're going to have a lot more days like this as we move into the future. Thank you all very much. It is indeed a good day, Governor. Uh, and uh, when you have good days, it's important that you bring out uh, good people to be a part of uh, what we're doing. And so today, we also uh, want to ask our mayor, Greg Fisher, uh, to share uh, his perspective on what this means for our city. He's had uh, a good amount of time in several tenures uh, as mayor of this city to see a lot of good happen. And uh, I hope, no pun intended, uh, goodwill is uh, part of the good that you recognize coming into West Louisville. Well, good afternoon, everybody, or almost good afternoon, and uh, great to have everybody here. Thank you, Devon. This is an amazing event to be part of here today, and I do believe, as has been set up here this day, will go down as a remarkable day for West Louisville in our city for all the reasons that have been set up here already. I want to thank the governor for being with us today and the role that the state played in so much of this. Eric Friedlander, thank you as well. I want to thank Amy Luttrell. Amy, when we first met, uh, she's a quiet lady, but she's a quiet and powerful leader here in our community as evidenced by what's taking place here today. Russ Cox and the Norton Healthcare team, I'm going to talk uh, more about. Uh, they've been true champions for our city. And thanks to all the partners that have helped make this happen as well. Uh, the whole Goodwill team, Rena and Devon, thank you very much, and all of Norton team as well, and everybody else. You know, success has thousands of uh, fathers and mothers, and we're going to have them on this project, and that's a good thing. I'm going to talk a little bit about what this project means to Louisville. Because one of my first goals when I came to office in 2011 was to create unprecedented investment in West Louisville. 
West Louisville have been disinvested in for an awfully long time. And I know the proud history of West Louisville, but we have to tell all the history of West Louisville as well. So it's a proud history, but over the years, it's incontroversial that West Louisville has been dis devastated by disinvestment, in, in, including institutional racist policies like urban renewal and redlining. That's part of the history of West Louisville. So right from the start, as we were coming out of the Great Recession of 2008-2012, my team and I started having conversations with West Louisville residents about how can we revitalize this important part of our community. And people have got to remember, West Louisville is 60,000 people. If West Louisville was its own city, it'd be the fourth biggest city in Kentucky. So this is a large part of our city and a large part of our commonwealth. So since 2014, through a lot of planning, the communities of West Louisville have experienced capital investment totaling $1.2 billion before today's announcement. Now I guess we can say it's $1.3 billion in West Louisville. So it's an unprecedented amount of investment that's taken place in the West. And to me, it's a good down payment. It is not the full investment by any stretch of the imagination. So our plan was to build catalytic investments around the Russell neighborhood, the perimeter of the Russell neighborhood, and lay a strong foundation for other investments to radiate throughout the West. So it's always great when a good plan works. And so from where we now stand, the biggest investment that took place was when we won the federal grant. We were competing against 60 other cities for a choice neighborhood grant. So that led to what will be over $250 million to transform Beecher Terrace. So of course that's the biggest and that was the start of this. And then the recently opened village at West Jefferson is sold out, including a bank, a sit-down restaurant, and a theme you're going to hear for the next couple of minutes, a Norton Healthcare facility as well. To the north, we're working and investing to expand Waterfront Park Phase 4 to establish, to establish one continuous waterfront park connecting the eastern portion of the park to West Louisville. And to the west, we have the newly opened Louisville Urban League, Norton Healthcare Sports and Learning Center. I want to thank all the citizens of Louisville. The Louisville Metro government taxpayer dollars were the lead investment, $10 million on that project and the donation of the land. And then, of course, it wouldn't have happened without the Urban League and, of course, Norton Healthcare once again. And then just blocks from here is the Republic Bank YMCA at 18th and Broadway. 18th and Broadway is always just a critical intersection for our city with, in the Republic Bank, a Norton Healthcare facility, and then also a site for the city's first bus rapid transit line. I'm confident we're going to see more growth, too, at 18th and Broadway on the west side. That part of Broadway needs to be developed very soon. So today, we add a $100 million project at 28th and Broadway to this growing list of investments. And for Louisvillians, I want you to think about what this means for Broadway. Okay, Broadway is one of our most historic corridors from Cave Hill to Shawnee Park. And with the bipartisan infrastructure law passed by President Biden and the Congress, there'll be a lot more money coming into this city as it relates to infrastructure. So our partnership with the state is going to be important on this to how we can further transform Broadway. And you can see this is already underway. So a $100 million project that brings together our city core values of lifelong learning, health, and compassion City is certainly pleased to be part of this project through Michael Gritton with Kentuckiana Works, which is our region's workforce development board. So in today's announcement, we're seeing a lot, a lot of intentions over the years by Metro government, by great community partners like Goodwill and Norton Healthcare coming together and meeting residents where they are and where their needs are. But it's about more than capital investments. It's also about investing in people because we know in our city Talent is spread, but opportunity is not. We're all working to fix that. And this project, this is an institutional investment, is going to make an incredible difference for people when it comes to better jobs, better health, and, of course, brighter futures. And this concentration of resources, this removal of barriers, 
is going to make that difference for black Louisville, who have paid for gross inequities and disparities for much too long in workplaces, classrooms, and in medical outcomes all throughout our country, but we got to take care of the business here in our city. And so recognizing this, advancing racial equity has been a major focus of my administration for this past decade. And when I signed the executive order in 2020, declaring racism as a public health crisis and released an advancing racial equity plan as a roadmap for change. It was projects like this one being announced today that we dreamed about and that we hoped would follow. Now the truthful telling of history is vital to a better future for humanity because history shows that life has not always been fair, but we can absolutely strive to make it more fair in the here and the now. So my team and I remain committed to promoting racial equity through every policy that is drafted and approved at all levels of Metro government. And this commitment by Goodwill and Norton is an exclamation point to equity. Let's give them a round of applause. So in closing, I want to thank Goodwill uh, for seeing the possibilities in a, of a brilliant future in this formal industrial site that was just sitting there waiting for something to happen. And way too long, they sit for way too long, Rev. But when Amy and Charlie Kane, Devon came and said, we're going to create an opportunity campus in West Louisville on this abandoned 20-acre site, I said, thank God. You know, bold and visionary. And when you're doing this kind of work, it's lonely sometimes for people to come forth and put their money where their mouth are and say, we're going to do something that's important, that's overdue in this community, and we are making a powerful statement of equity and opportunity. So I don't think we can thank Goodwill enough for seeing that. Without that, we wouldn't have seen the announcement from Norton Healthcare today. Norton Healthcare, I want to thank them for continuing uh, their investment in West Louisville. We've heard this here today, but it really deserves noting. These, this, is just, this is not their first investment. So it shows the culture of the company, the values of the board, the steadfastness of their approach, building upon the presence at the Republic Bank YMCA, the village at West Jefferson, of course, the Norton Healthcare Sports and Learning Center, and now with this announcement, we're here today bringing so much more hope and opportunity to West Louisville with this long overdue hospital. So this is such a strong move for the city. I couldn't be more delighted about this historic announcement. This is me when I look really excited, by the way. <laughs> so. Before I pass the baton here, uh, one thing that I've repeatedly heard from West Louisville residents about economic development in the West is that they were used to promises being made, but few, far few two promises materializing. And they told me that they will believe the promises when they see construction. Now, over the past couple years, residents tell me that promises have been made and promises have been kept. And today's announcement, on top of Goodwill's original Opportunity Campus Pledge, is one more promise that will be kept. We're witnessing a growing foundation whose pieces are complementing each other to benefit untold Louisvillians to come. And this is what happens when people of Goodwill, who share a common goal, work together, all of us, everybody in this room, residents, businesses, HBCUs, nonprofits, everybody working together. So again, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Thanks to the team at Goodwill Industries of Kentucky and Norton Healthcare for their commitment to this wonderful project. And I look forward to joining everybody later this year to break ground on the Opportunity Campus. Thank you all. Congratulations. Thank you, Mayor. Um, when we determined that it was 28th and Broadway where we wanted uh, to build our Opportunity Campus, 
Uh, the first call that we made outside of our Goodwill network uh, was to Council President David James. That's because this property is in his district as a council member. Uh, and he stepped up not only as a council member, but quite frankly as a friend to Goodwill, helping us navigate this process of establishing a new home uh, in West Louisville. And so uh, I'm going to ask uh, David James if he'd share a few words with us. Tell us a little bit about what Well, hello, everybody. One of the things I learned about being last is that when you prepare a speech and you're last, everybody says what you're going to say, so don't use it. Um, Mayor, Governor, uh, thank you for everything. Goodwill and Norton's outstanding. Uh, I'm going to be a good politician and just talk for a short period of time. Uh, but I want to say a few things. Um, first of all, I want to echo uh, what Mr. Cox just said to Pastor Cosby. We will be in HBU City. We will be. The other thing that I wanted to recognize is I see a couple of my colleagues in the audience, and that's Ja'Cory Arthur and Councilwoman Keisha Dorsey. Stand up, stand up, let people see you. <laughs> um, and so, uh, Devon, I need to tell you that with redistricting, I no longer have that spot. Otherwise, I'd be super happy. <laughs> But I am very, very happy. Um, the, when Devon called me a little over a year ago, I think it was, and said, hey, I got a secret for you. And I said, oh, God. And so and uh, he told me what it was. And it took my breath away, actually, uh, when he first started talking about it. And then I got invited down to the office. And we talked about it intently. And he asked me, he said, what kind of things you think we, do you think we should have there? And as I was listening to Amy talk, those are the exact same things that we talked about. And so um, it's not um, that David James is a smart guy. I just listen to everybody, and we see everything. I think if you ask Councilman Dorsey and Councilman Arthur the same thing, they would tell you the same answers. And so this is like a dream come true for us. And it's going to be a dream come true for West Louisville, and it's going to be so good for the citizens of West Louisville. A $100 million investment in the way that you're investing it is a dream. And so I just want to say that thank you to everybody. Uh, I'm looking forward to the grand opening, and uh, I love you all. Thank you. David did something extremely important. I want to pause for a moment just to recognize that we do have uh, a number of special people who have joined us today. Uh, a number of our elected officials, if you're here as an elected official, first off, we're going to ask if you stand just to be, to be recognized so we can acknowledge your presence here today. Morgan, Congressman Yarmouth, Chikori. Keisha, we appreciate you guys for being here. I know there are a number of other candidates who are running for office, and I'm going to ask if you are uh, running for office today, if you would stand so we might recognize you as well. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I, I guess he is running for office, isn't he? <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> so we are going to, uh, in just a second, uh, open this up for a few uh, questions that uh, I'm certain the media and, and maybe several of you have. But before we do that, uh, you know, one of the most important pieces of this puzzle uh, is how we're going to pay for this. And fortunately for us at Goodwill, we have an incredible CFO, Mark Holman. Uh, and we're going to ask Mike, Mark to come up uh, and share for us just a few minutes uh, our plan to make this happen. because. Uh, as much as uh, we are committed to doing a lot of this work through our channels at Goodwill, uh, there's also a need for the community to be a part of what's also about to happen here. Mark? Well, if you know me, a few minutes I don't need. <laughs> I'm brief. Uh, Amy mentioned this $30 million investment from us and uh, probably $25 million in hard construction costs. We have Weir Constructors. They're going to be our partner and uh, Vadim Kaplan, and Studio A is going to be our architect. So that's exciting how we're going to get there. As far as our other partners, New Markets Tax Credits, we have Old National Bank here. Maybe Tommy Elliott can stand. 
Uh, they're a huge investor. They've invested both the new, new market tax credit and as a community development entity. So that's a huge, we wouldn't be able to do that without them. Um, and there's other partners as well, but really for the other piece of it, the 25 million left, if you do the math, uh, maybe two, five million for new markets tax credits, we're gonna ask the community, Norton, our number one donor, uh, to step up and do half, and Google will match the other half. So that's all of you who've donated your clothes. <laughs> that's where that's coming from, in our, in our generous donors and your shoppers, so. And Devon is gonna be in charge of this capital campaign, so I'm getting his attention. <laughs> So he will be asking and knocking on your doors. So I hope you support us. And I've already, we've already got some support from trees. I see some, someone out in the audience has offered us trees yesterday. So that's exciting. Thank you, Cindy Sullivan and Henry Heiser. So uh, point of privilege here, just as we begin to take uh, questions uh, from the media, we do have a number of uh, extremely important people here, and I'm thankful that you have all uh, been able to attend this morning. But uh, there's one person in particular who I'm extremely happy was able to attend this morning. That's my mother, Pamela Dickerson. Stand, Mom. <laughs> and I'm excited that my mother's here because she raised me in West Louisville, and we watched this community go through a transformation and uh, she knows that I have a heart for this place where she uh, helped groom me and now we get a chance to see it come back to life and so uh, we started a, a good portion of our journey at 227 South 39th Street uh, where Kevin Cosby was our landlord and uh, we have uh, grown and uh, have been able to contribute to this community and we do that now in a much more uh, visible way. So thank you, Mom, for being here. Uh, questions from the media. Uh, are there any that we can answer? We can do that here on stage. If you guys would like to have uh, some answered off stage, we can we can make that happen as well. I think we've got one here from Wave. Uh, my question's for Russ. Uh, you talk about the amount of investment that you've put into the area over the past few years. Is there a threshold that you feel like you need to make, or how will you know when you've made enough to, I guess, accomplish your goal of equitable health care for everyone? It's a simple equation for us, and thanks for the question. When this entire community has equal access, and when our health statistics are the best in the country, we've reached where we need to be. That's a journey, but the day we start there. Thank you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that before you leave, you come up front and see the renderings that we have for the Opportunity Campus facility, the Norton Healthcare Medical Facility. Uh, and shake hands with someone you don't know. Introduce yourself because we're all going to be friends and neighbors here real soon. Thank you.